but you're just a man. Hey folks, welcome to this next episode of You Arnold Aries. And I'm going to take a quick look at uh, something that happened in, in our Facebook group a while ago. Uh, quick setup. I started writing, I think, well over 20 years ago now. Um, I was doing something on the internet back in the day, started what, what now turned into my blog. A few years afterward, but blogging didn't exist when I started my first website, which was reviews and articles about martial arts and self defense. Now, um, that led to a bunch of other things. Eventually, it led to me um, getting to talk with Lauren Christensen. He apparently liked my writing and uh, offered, you know, why don't we write a book together? And that's how I got started. There was no real uh, YouTube or anything like that back in those days, no Facebook. So it was very, very different. I started writing and here I am today. Now, one of the things I always wanted to do as I got older is help out other younger uh, people who are, you know, trying to promote, make content in the martial arts and self-defense genre, whether it's writing books, making instructional videos and so on, kind of, you know, then pass it on, pay it forward like Lauren did with me. And over time, I've talked to some people, but I've also seen a number of people that are, are apparently pretty successful, but have a very different approach as to how they make content and promote themselves than I do. That means that I'm getting old, uh, which is true. I'm almost 50, so this kind of stuff is only to be expected. That's a part of life. So I don't have an issue with that. That's it, just because I am getting older doesn't mean that the way I view things is by definition wrong. And it doesn't mean that a younger generation, what they do is by definition right. It is just newer. Um, I try to evolve with the times. Some of you have been following me for a long time will have noticed this, that the articles that I wrote 10, 15 years ago on my blog, uh, I don't write those kind of articles now. I've talked in the... In, in the past about you know how, how my personal evolution has been from martial arts to self-defense to a bunch of other stuff and, and violence in society and so on so i try to view things through different lenses but that's that's just me nowadays now i don't fault people for having their own take on things that's perfectly fine i have no issue with the way they present themselves other than that i wouldn't do it i try not to do it and also, I disagree fundamentally with certain aspects. And that's kind of what we were talking about in uh, my Facebook group. And again, I'll put a link to that if you want to join us. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the description uh, and in the show notes. Um, you, you'll find the link, again, in, in the description of, of this uh, podcast. You'll, you'll find links. So check that out. Um, we, we were talking about that. And I uh, gave an example of one a young YouTuber that I said, you know, seems interesting. And then he kind of made the decision for me by going all negative. And, and this is what we nowadays call drama channels in which they're, they're basically creating drama or talking about, look what this guy said, look what that guy did. Oh my God, you can't believe what happened. Those kind of headlines and thumbnails and so on. Or, you know, um, I, I, I sparred with this guy and you can't believe what happened. So this kind of stuff. That, that is just marketing. Uh, you have to do some form of marketing if you want to promote something. That's fine. It's just that the, these are really old internet tricks that were, that were old 10 years ago. Um, and they still work, obviously. But the point is that it draws viewers. But it doesn't necessarily reflect the content that you then see. Or um, that content isn't necessarily of high quality just because you've got a catchy title and uh or um or let's say you you seek controversy a little bit by saying things a certain way and again i, I did kind of stuff on my blog as well to a certain degree so again i'm not faulting anybody uh, for that my point is that it's um a little bit more complex than that and as you get older i think you see a lot more of those nuances that you don't see when you're younger so the person we were talking about made this pretty negative video about a bunch of people. Now, this is relevant, right? Um, and, and one of my members commented and says, it's that specific guy we were talking about studied martial art for many, many years and basically came to the conclusion that it, it didn't work 
for self-defense. He couldn't, you know, defend himself um, well using it. So basically, his his training didn't really help him out all that much. That is a discussion in and of itself. Like, is it you? Is it your teacher? Is it the method of teaching that he uses? Is it that you're not really, you know, the right person for this kind of art? Maybe you would be a better fit in a different system. Could be a bunch of factors. But if you come to the conclusion that your art doesn't work, immediately dismissing the art is not necessarily, I think, the right solution. That said, this is what one of my members said. So you realize that you didn't learn anything, that, that you can't use it. So all of a sudden you are now a truth seeker and, and you are going to you know, look at other people and make comments about their skill or effectiveness of what they're doing based on what exactly? On your years of experience of, of not being able to do something, of your years of training in a system that you can't make work, how does being unqualified make you qualified to correct others? And this is, this is my, my whole you know, meme that I like to share uh, from the old movie by the sword is that one must learn before one teaches. But if what you learned by your own admission doesn't work, how does that make you an expert at what does work? And I thought that was a really, really good point that uh, one of my members um, brought up. So this, br this brings us back to the value of expertise. Now, as I always say, everybody isn't en entitled to their own opinion. I am a staunch supporter of freedom of speech. You are more than welcome to share your opinions. And every YouTuber and commenter and whatever has the right to share these things. But it doesn't mean that I have to take them seriously. And it also doesn't mean that I can't comment on them and, and share my opinion on them, which is perfectly fine. As so many people have done with my stuff, it's perfectly fine. If it isn't for you, that's great. You know, that is perfectly fine. But that doesn't mean that, there, that you have an authority to speak. Now, then we get to different levels of um, what is actually worthwhile content to listen to. If you, and if, you, if you've watched these old interviews that Jay Leno, uh, of the, of the, formerly of The Tonight Show, used to do by doing street interviews, and he'd ask these really basic questions to people uh, that, he, that he would uh, you know, stop on the sidewalk. And so many people got them wrong. <laughs> um, so you can see that there's a lot of people out there with, and okay, I know you put a camera in somebody's face and their IQ drops by X amount of points. It's kind of as, as, the, as uh, the, the, the trope goes. But the point is there's a lot of people who don't know certain things. And then if they make pronouncements and they state their opinions very strongly and they, they, they create this kind of reasoning that they, that they propose, that this is why I think this and this and this person, what he's showing is, is nonsense and doesn't work. Again, if it comes from you having no experience that is actually valid in the sense that, that you by your own admission say, well, what I learned doesn't work. I, I have no experience in doing stuff that actually works. So now I'm going to tell you that this stuff that I'm watching here is bullshit because, because I know. <laughs> See, that, that doesn't make sense to me. So as we got into discussion um, about, you know, these kind of channels where there's a bunch of people making a lot of comments, like calling this bullshit and that nonsense and so on. Um, I've, I've, I've had that kind of stuff come my way as well. I'm like, oh, fine, whatever, you know, I know why I do certain things. If you take like a three second clip out of something that I do, or you take something completely out of context, create this whole narrative in your own head, and then claim like, okay, this is bullshit, this doesn't work for this and this reason. I'm like, okay, feel free to do that. That's, that's fine. Everybody can, can, you know, can think like that. I'm like, okay, I'll just keep doing my thing in my own little corner. And if people like it, that's great. If you find use for it, awesome. If it's not for you, equally great. But I don't see the need to talk to people who have this kind of weird logic in like, I am an expert on everything, and I am an ultimate authority um, on martial arts and self defense, and I get to critique everybody. And because I have a big channel, I have like, you know, tens or hundreds of thousands of people following me, I am an authority. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> like, being popular doesn't mean you're right. 
Um, like like uh, they used to say when I was younger, like billions of flies eat shit. Doesn't mean they're right and that you should do that too. So so it's not a popularity contest. Truth is not, you know, decided by by the, 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 the high numbers of people believing something to be true. Truth is, and, and then we get to a big discussion about what truth is, but um, my point is that I, I don't I don't care how many followers you are. If you've got zero followers, but you make a great argument, I'll listen to you and I think it's worth considering. If you have, you know, millions of followers and you make a crappy argument, I'll, I'll you know, poke holes in it maybe and disagree with you. So I think that's what any sensible person would do. Now, and the thing I wanted to comment on um, in, in this case uh, in particular, one of the things that you see nowadays is when I started on social media many years ago, it, it was very different from what it is now. Now it's a lot more professional. You've, you've got a bunch of people making a living on social media, on YouTube, Instagram, and so on. It's fine. It's great. But you have to do it a certain way. Um, one of the things that, that, that is so prevalent nowadays is they, they have good marketing. They're selling a story. They are telling you a story as well. As human beings, we are very susceptible to that. Every marketeer, every PR person will tell you is that it's the story that counts, not necessarily the content. Um, that's not really my thing. I don't really look for the story per se. I look for the content, which is why I'm often going a little bit against the grain with popular talk, because if I can spot the story, I'm like, okay, it's a great story, but that doesn't mean your, your, the, the content of the story is right. Writing a story means using certain techniques. And if you use these techniques correctly in our Western mindset, because the way that stories work for us for thousands of years, we will connect to it with, with, it, with that story on an emotional level. And it will ring true to us. Whereas if it's not using those techniques or using very different techniques from different cultures and so on, um, we will find it a little bit more difficult to, to follow and it won't necessarily ring as true to us then. Now, what this guy was doing here is is basically, it's called The Hero's Journey or The Monomyth by Joseph Campbell. That's like from the 1950s. Um, and I'll put a link to, to a really good book, um, Hero with a Thousand Faces, that Campbell wrote, uh, which influenced you know the greats like George Lucas, Star Wars, very much influenced by uh, The Monomyth and tried to, at some times, critics say shoehorn um, Joseph Campbell's work into the, the, the Star Wars movies, but that's another discussion. So what I saw this guy on YouTube do is basically say like, okay, I am, you know, like a, the, the proverbial myth of the small boy on a farm uh, gets the call to adventure and then he has a lot of adventures and eventually comes back home and he's the hero uh, because he has been, you know, forged in fire and um, learned a lot, grown and overcome the, the enemy and he ends up being this hero uh, at the end of the story. That's the monomyth very quickly uh, explained. So there's this guy here, I study for many different years in this martial art and it's not working for me and then I discover something else and at first I get beat up but I get better, da 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 da. That is a story, that is the hero's journey, like I wouldn't say verbatim necessarily, but all the elements are there. Humans connect with that. Now, one of the things that makes good writing is that you've got the hero and you've got the villain in the story. Good writing, a good villain, is where you make the villain the hero in his own mind. He thinks he's the hero of the story. And he thinks that uh, the hero that we are watching uh, is actually the villain. So in the villain's mind, he is doing the right thing. He is also on his own journey uh, and on his own, um, you know, his own monomyth where he is going to be forged in fire and become this, uh, this ultimate hero who does the right thing, who saves the universe or what have you. Dark Vader, Luke Skywalker, and so on. And, and you find this good storytelling does this. So they both think they're right. Who is right in reality? Well, that's the discussion. 
So as you guys have noticed, I'm a lot more nuanced. I am typically trying to see both sides of the argument. And if there's only two sides of an argument, that's actually a fairly basic, basic discussion because it's going to be a lot more complex in reality. There's going to be 50 um, sides to it and so on. So my whole point is this, when you watch um, people, and it includes me, by the way, when you watch people put videos, podcasts, books out there, and so on, look for the story. What is the story? And again, I'll, I, I'll put a link to the, to the book in the show notes that you can buy. It, it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit dry material to read, but it actually, it's actually looking at thousands of years of myths and folklore and stories and then just drawing out all the different um, elements that are consistently there. And that is the monomyth, that is the hero's journey. And, and all the elements in different uh, cultures, in different civilizations, it, throughout different ages from 2,000 years ago or 100 years ago, the same things seem to always come back. That is uh, the hero's journey. So if you know about these elements, you will recognize them and then you can focus more, okay, so aside of this instinctive connection with the story that I'm being told, that is just very much cultural, um, you're culturally primed to, to uh, resonate with these kind of techniques of storytelling. Aside of that, do I actually agree with what's being said or what's being shown? And I think then you will get further with the information that you're given and you can actually learn something or dismiss it when it doesn't actually make sense to you or you disagree with it after careful consideration as opposed to immediate acceptance on an emotional level. Because we like to think we're always very rational. We like to think we are not led by our emotions, but there is a large body of scientific uh, literature that clearly indicates that our emotions are much more a driving factor in our thoughts, in our decisions, in our opinions, than actually our capacity, our, our capability of thinking rationally about something. Right, that's it. Okay, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this one. Again, this is another You Are Aries podcast, so these are shorter. Next week, I will have, finally, I will release the interview that I did with Mark de Cascos. Again, massive re-edit because of my mic. My mic not working and Mark's uh, voice came through fine. So I have to edit that. Uh, still working on that. So it's a lot of work. But it's going to be a great interview. You're going to enjoy that a lot. So in the meantime, uh, like this, uh, this episode. Hit the subscribe button. Share with uh, everybody who, wants to, who might enjoy this. Uh, and as always, you can support me on, on Patreon in different ways. All the links are in the show notes. That's it. Take care. Goodbye.